I'm saying my progress is selfilluminatedtrails.psd. It's found inside the 18 Art of Mesh folder. And in this exercise, as well as the next, we're going to fix a few things that I think are wrong about this scene. For example, the car is a little bit too dark, so I'm going to increase the illumination that's being provided by that image light. And notice, this is really peculiar. Notice there's this strange rendering issue across the rear window. So we have a little bit, an extremely horizontal edge going. It's created in some way, shape, or form by the image light. It goes away if you throw the image light away. However, modifying the image light doesn't seem to help. And in fact, it gets much worse under certain conditions. And then I'm finding these reflections to be a little bit too jagged. So we're gonna solve all those issues right now. Here's how. We're gonna start by bringing up the 3D panel and changing the quality setting back to interactive painting. And I'm gonna go ahead and twirl all these meshes closed once again so that I can work my way down to the lights. Or I suppose I could just filter the scene by the lights. But I've already done it, so I'm gonna click on beach lining, which is the image light, and I'm gonna increase the intensity setting to one. And so that should bring some additional bright reflections into the scene. Next, I'm gonna twirl open Diablo so that I can gain access to the windows material. And I'm gonna increase the refraction value ever so slightly. You don't wanna to go too nuts with this value or you're gonna refract the heck out of the interior of the scene and the seats are gonna leap forward and everything's gonna look just strange. But in order to get rid of that effect or actually make that effect as absolutely bad as it can be so it takes up the entire window, you have to increase the refraction value to at least 1.04. So go ahead and do so. You won't see it happen right away because we're not working in the ray trace mode. You have to ray trace in order to see refractions. However, what that does is it turns the windows kind of gray. I'm just telling you that in advance because I'm quite familiar with the scene by now, which is why we're going to add a little blue in the form of an illumination map. So go to the illumination option right there, and we don't want the entire windows turning blue, which is what would happen if I clicked on the color swatch and dialed in a shade of blue. Instead, what we're gonna do is click on a folder icon and choose new texture, and go ahead and dial in width and height values of 450 pixels each. That'll work out just fine, and we'll call this new image Windows Illumination like so. Click OK. And that may end up making the windows look entirely white. And that's because that image I just created is filled with white. No problem. Go ahead and click on the little page icon and choose the open texture command in order to open that white image inside of a new window. Now what I want you to do is press the D key in order to establish your default colors, black as foreground, white as background, then press the X key in order to turn your foreground color into white, and I want you to dial in a new color value here inside the colors panel, and that would be 220, 220 degrees for the hue value, 70% for the saturation value, and then for the brightness value, take that down to 50%, and that's the color we're looking for. Now press the X key again to swap those two colors. So you have black as the foreground color, and that deep blue as the background color. Now, here's the interesting thing. Go up to the 3D menu and choose Create UV Overlays and choose Wireframe. And you're gonna see this mess of wireframes and each one of these represents either the interior edge or the exterior edge or some other weird little tiny fragmented edge of a window. But notice that they all start in the lower left corner and go outward. Which got me thinking, well, I shouldn't add a linear gradient. That's what I was thinking of doing in order to create kind of a gradient illumination effect. Instead, I should apply a radial gradient. So I'm just gonna go ahead and rename that layer wireframe just so I know what it is, and I'll turn it off because we're not ultimately gonna need it. I just need to bear in mind that we need to create a radial gradient from the lower left corner outward. And we're gonna do so by switching to the gradient tool, which you can get by pressing the G key, and then go ahead and make sure that your gradient option is set to foreground to background, as mine is, and go ahead and select the second icon in up here, which is radial gradient. Reverse should be turned off, dither on, transparency on as well, and the blend mode, of course, set to normal with an opacity value of 100%. Draw that gradient. I've got the shift key down. I started in the lower left corner, and I'm going to end things right about there in order to create that kind of effect. And that might be a little bit too much blue, so I'm gonna try again, drag it up a little farther like so. That should work out pretty nicely. I'll click the close box, then I'll close the image and then click the yes button here on the PC or the save button on the Mac. And the next step, my friends, is to go ahead and run a render. 
So what I want you to do is click on scene and change the quality from interactive painting to ray trace final. Now what this is going to mean, and I'm going to go ahead and close my 3D panel by the way, and then restore the render by going up to the 3D menu and choosing resume progressive render. And here's what's going on folks. We want a final ray trace version of the scene because if we work with what we have now, our highlights are way too noisy. We're going to be applying a 2D effect in order to smooth things out. So we need as little noise as possible. So we need to let Photoshop do its full ray tracing thing. When your scene is complete, when you finish ray tracing your scene, if you're working along with me, then go ahead and rejoin me in the final video. And I'll show you how to smooth out those highlights.